You know, Jesus said in St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 16, verse 18, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And today, he is building his church. It is when the Lord shall build up Zion, he shall appear in his glory. He's building his church. He's training his kids. Amen. Amen. Every knee will have to bow. Every tongue would confess that Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Zechariah chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 6. I'm sure you had a beautiful day. Yes. Really. Yes. Praise God. Verse 6. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. He said, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord of hosts. <clears throat> Would you turn to Psalm 127? Psalm 127. I'm reading from verse 1. Have you found it? Good. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman wake it, but in vain. I'll read it again. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. He didn't say they will not build. He said, but they are laboring in vain. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman wake it, but in vain. It is not by might. It is not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. We are children of God. And as children of God, we are different from the world. The world has its ways. But we do not belong to the world. We have been called out of the world. We are born again. We belong in the kingdom of God. We have our own principles of life. Our lives are not empty. There's a move of God's spirit in his church that makes the church different from the rest of the world. He said, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness <clears throat> into his marvelous light. We've been called out of darkness to show forth the praises of God. The Bible says for us to declare his virtues 
and perfections. He has brought us into a large place. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He has brought us into a large place. We have arrived in the realm of God's spirit. Because he's brought us here. Amen. He's brought us here. We're different from the world. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my word. And I'll pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But you know him. Hallelujah. Then he said to them, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. But well, thanks be to God, today he is already in us. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. He says, but you know him. That's the Spirit of God. That's the Holy Ghost. He said, I'll pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter. He is the one in charge of the church today. And because he lives in us, with us nothing can be impossible. Say amen. amen. I like to read again from Exodus 14th chapter. <clears throat> and I'd like to read a little faster. So I hope you would follow very quickly. A beautiful story. From verse 1, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel that they turn and encamp before Pihai Hirot between Migdol and the sea over against Be'er Zephon. Before it shall ye encamp by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, They are entangled in the land. The wilderness had shut them in. And I will hide in Pharaoh's heart that he shall follow after them, and I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his host. That the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. Hallelujah. And they did so. <clears throat> and it was told the king of Egypt. That the people fled. And the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants was turned against the people. And they said why have we done this? That we have let the Israel go from serving us. And he made ready his chariot and took his people with him. And he took... 600 chosen chars, and all the chars of Egypt, and captains over every one of them. And the Lord had in the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with an eye hand, but the Egyptians pursued after them, all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh, and his horsemen, and his army, and overtook them, and camping by the sea beside Pihai Harod, before Beersiphon. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. That's verse 10. And they were so afraid, and the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. And they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us, to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not. Say it, come on. Fear ye not. Say it again. <coughs> Say it again. Ye not. Hallelujah. Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. Hallelujah. Glory. He said, For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, 
ye shall see them again no more forever. That touches me. Standing before an invading force. The strongest in the world at the time. This was the world power of the day. The strongest army on the face of the earth. They hadn't lost a battle. Not once. They had destroyed nations and taken their kings captive. Pharaoh didn't just send a group of his army. He sent all of them. He released all his chariots because this was something he wanted to do for all the earth to know about. Because Israel grew up in Egypt and became enslaved. But Pharaoh was going to get honored to get a whole nation into bondage. It was a glorious hour for Pharaoh. Nobody wanted to miss this. And so he got his people together and they went. The best chariots of Egypt were there. All of his army went after the children of Israel. There was no way for them. But Moses, being the man that he was, a man who had known the Spirit of God, one who had touched God, who had been in the presence of God. Who had known what it was. To be there. When nobody else was there. In the presence of God. You know Jesus said. Pray to your father who sees in secret. And the father who sees in secret. Shall reward you openly. He's the one that sees in secret. But nobody else is there. But when he's going to reward you, he will do it openly. Hallelujah. The Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord. And he was watching all this. And Moses cried unto the Lord. Watch this. <clears throat> Verse 15. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Why do you cry to me now? This is not the time to cry to me now. I don't know where you are in your life. To understand the mysteries of God. We have moved from the rod to the word. Are you hearing this? God said to Moses, With this rod, you will perform miracles. But Joshua didn't need the rod. God said to Joshua, Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you. All you need is step your foot there, and it's all yours. He said, no man shall be able to stand against you all the days of your life. All you need is a step there. And Jesus came and said, you don't even need to step there. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, you can have what you say. <laughs> Glory to God. The revelation has moved from the rod to the word. Hallelujah. And things have changed. Can you say amen? amen? But here the principle is the same. God said to Moses, Why do you cry to me now? God said, 
Lift, he said, first of all, he said, speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. My people don't stop. That's what he's saying. He's letting Moses understand the move of God's Spirit. We don't stop when we come into this arena. In this area of life, we don't stop, we don't run away. We don't retreat, we don't submit. He said, Moses, don't cry now. Oh, hallelujah. The psalmist said, our soul is escaped. He said, the net is broken. And we are gone. Hallelujah. It's broken. Oh, praise God. Our soul is escaped as a bird. The net is broken. And we are escaped and you know what we've come back we escaped to go learn it learn the word and then we came back you didn't catch that Moses escaped from Egypt the net was broken and he was gone and then he heard the word of God in the wilderness. At the backside of the desert, God talked to him. He went back to Egypt from where he had escaped. We only escape to go learn the word of God. When we get it, we come back. Hallelujah. He said, our soul is escaped. The net is broken and we are gone but we've come back hallelujah because God said go back to Egypt tell Pharaoh let my people go it's the same thing you know when God brings you out of that devil's territory he fills you with his spirit and gives you his word and sends you back to deliver others from the hand of the devil he said to Saul of Tarsus I'm sending you to go to the Gentiles turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God there was where he was. God brought him out and sent him back. Hallelujah. Oh, I like this. Verse 15 again. The Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. But lift thou up thy rod and stretch out thine hand over the sea and divide it. This is one of the most beautiful portions of the Bible. When you see it for yourself. That God didn't say I will divide it. God told a man to divide the sea. God said to him, stretch your hand over the sea and divide it. He said lift up your rod. And stretch your hand over the sea and divide it. God didn't say I will divide it. He gave that responsibility to Moses. God wants you as his partner. That's why he said don't let anything happen to you. Don't sit down there. 
Oh. Oh, glory. Who am I talking to now? Listen. Don't sit down there and expect a miracle. Does that shock you? Don't expect a miracle. Perform a miracle. Perform a miracle. Don't sit down there expecting it. Do it. Mm. <laughs> Oh, hallelujah. We are moving in the spirit. We are refusing to be victims. Are you hearing me? Refusing to be victims. Refusing to sit down there expecting something to turn up. God said to Moses, why do you cry to me now? Stretch your hand over. Moses was expecting a miracle. He said, stand still and expect a miracle. That's what he said. But then he said the right thing. He said, the Egyptians that you see today. Oh, hallelujah. You shall see them again no more forever. He said, the Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. But he said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. God said, Moses, uh-uh, don't stand still. Move on, glory to God. He said, don't sit there expecting, perform a miracle. We are sons of God. We are not ordinary people. We are born again. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away and all things are become new. And all things are of God. Hallelujah. All these new things are of God. This new creation is of God. We are victors in Christ Jesus. Whatsoever is born of God. Overcometh the world. Whatsoever is born of God. Whatsoever is born of God. Overcometh the world. I don't know what you are dealing with in your life. I don't know what you're facing in your life. Maybe there's a loved one who's sick or diseased or afflicted. What are you going to do? You say, we've been praying. God is saying to you today, perform a miracle. You say, I've been expecting something to happen. God is saying, I've been expecting you to do something. He said, Moses, why do you cry to me now? Why now? Stretch your hand over the water. Divide it. We are partners with God. Paul said, we are workers together with God. This is the reason he sent the Holy Ghost to come and live in us so that our lives can be fully supernatural. We are partakers of the divine nature. In other words, we are participating in the divine nature. We are not victims. We are victors. Can you say amen? He says, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. You can turn around the circumstances of your life. All you need is to understand the principle of the word of God. You can actually turn the circumstances of your life around. Don't wait there. Don't expect something to turn up. Do something. Do it and call it so. 
The problem is a lot of people have never understood that the Holy Ghost has come to be with us. With the Holy Ghost, we cannot fail. With the Holy Ghost, we cannot lose. It has become absolutely impossible for us to lose with the Holy Ghost. The only reason a Christian can lose or fail is when you neglect the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. When you neglect the Holy Ghost, you can lose, you can fail a thousand times. But when you walk with Him, hallelujah, you'll never fail. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. I want you to see this. <clears throat> Still in the same chapter. Now I'm reading from verse 16. But leave thou up thy rod and stretch out thy hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians. And they shall follow them. Copycats, you know. And I will get me honor upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts, upon his chariots, upon all his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord <laughs> when I am done with Pharaoh. <laughs> Doesn't it sound like that in your Bible? <laughs> Verse 19. And the angel of God which went before the camp of Israel removed and went behind them. And the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. It came to pass, it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel, and it was a cloud and a darkness to them, but it gave light by night to these, so that the one came not near the other all the, all the night. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea. Ooh, do I like this? Watch it. Verse 21. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And the Lord. See, always Moses and the Lord. Can you get it? Moses and the Lord. Partners. Make him your partner in your business. Make him your partner in your family. Make him your partner. And see what happens in your life. Hallelujah. Watch this now. Look at this. Where are we? Verse 21, <clears throat> Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night. Listen, you're not talking of some little river. It wasn't a little pond. We're talking of the Red Sea. You know what the sea is? We're talking of the Red Sea. A sea, not a swimming pool. <laughs> the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strongest wind all that night and make the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground. Brother, this is a fact. And the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued. I think they were really crazy. <laughs> they pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea. They also went into the sea. <laughs> Pharaoh. Even all Pharaoh's horses and his chariots and his horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning watch, listen, it's a long distance, you understand? Long, long distance. The Bible says, do not fret when you see the wicked prospering. They said the righteous prospers, the wicked prospers also. That means both of them are walking in the sea on dry ground. Just wait a little more. 
Hallelujah. Just wait a little more. You're going to turn back and they'll not be there. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 24, and it came to pass that in the morning watch the Lord looked on to the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host. Of <laughs> he troubled them. Do you understand? Watch, this is nice. And to, ooh, hey, listen, the chariots went right into the, into the, the sea, the midst of the sea on dry ground. So they were driving and the horses were pulling this chariots. So watch this. And verse 25, it says, God took off their chariot wheels. You know why? He don't want anybody to escape. <laughs> By the time he lets the water loose, he doesn't want anybody to run out. He took off their chariot wheels. <laughs> ah, look at it. He took off the chariot wheels that they drove them heavily. I mean, no more wheels now. So that the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel, for the Lord fight it for them. It's too late now. And the Lord, verse 26, said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand. Can you see? Always it's the Lord and Moses. He, he wants to call right again. He can't do it until Moses does it. Because it was Moses who opened it in the first place. So he says, Moses, come on. Stretch your hand over the sea again so that the waters can come together and we can catch all them Egyptians. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Verse 26. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the sea. That the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength. When the morning appeared, and the Egyptians fled against it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. And the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen, and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. There remains not so much as one of them. But the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea. And the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. And Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians. And the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. Hallelujah! You and God are partners. Oh, hallelujah. The Bible says God is faithful. By whom you were called, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 9, by whom you were called into fellowship with his son Jesus. That means into partnership with his son Jesus. For his partners. He says, I'll pray the Father. And he shall give you another comforter. One that is called to go alongside. That's the meaning of the word from which comforter was translated. One called to go with you. That's the Holy Ghost. You are not fully dressed without the Holy Ghost. Don't you go out. Are you hearing me? You're not ready until you're moving with him. You're not ready. Oh, glory to his name forever. <clears throat> we have come to the kingdom at the right time. Oh, the Spirit of God is in charge of the church today. The anointing of that Spirit is upon us as children of God. We are anointed. And by that anointing, we cannot lose. We cannot fail. You only fail or lose or get defeated 
when you get out from that anointing. But we have to move with the Spirit of God. We have to walk with the Spirit of God. He said, except the Lord build a house. They labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman wicked, but in vain. He says, Moses stretched his hand over the sea. And God caused the strongest wind to divide it. And wind is a type of the Spirit of God. It was Moses doing what God asked him to do. And the Spirit of God present there playing his own part. You cannot do it alone. Tell somebody you cannot do it alone. alone. Say it again. You cannot do it alone. alone. You know one of the problems that many people have. Is the fact that they have not known how to move with the spirit of God. They have not known how to yield themselves to the spirit of God. It's important for us to learn. To respond to the spirit. It's important for us to learn to be yielded. You know what it is to yield? If you take a metal and you bend it, it's so it's hard to bend it. Have you ever bent it? And suddenly you got to a certain point and it was so easy, it just yielded. Have you ever seen that? Or you got something you were stretching and it was elastic and it came back. And you stretched it again and it came back. Then we have the limit of its elasticity. And then after that is its yielding point. It yields. It doesn't resist anymore. Do you understand? You stretch it.